Good morning, good evening. Hi everyone, so we are here. Um, in the last video, I did say that uh, we're gonna talk about how pregnancy humbled me. And don't worry today, my co-host Alex is not here with me. He's over there, he's behind the camera. I think he's trying out uh, the director thing in case daddy is sick. So, um, pregnancy has always seemed like, um, I don't know, some, I don't know, in my head, it was always like, oh, pregnancy, this, oh, people just over-exaggerate, ha, 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 pregnancy is just a state of you carrying a child, you can't say, oh, I'm always sleepy, or I'm tired, or I'm this, or I'm craving that, and somehow it's like, God was sitting down and saying, well, no, no, mm, I'll show you, so then, uh, like I said, I resigned, I went back to Essen, then I flew to Germany. So I used to uh, stay one month in South Africa and one month in Germany. And traveling with the pregnancy, it's never easy. So sometimes I had a direct flight, sometimes I had stopovers, which was a struggle. So, in the beginning of my pregnancy, I didn't show much until like six months or seven months. Okay. And that was not much of an issue. Everything was going well. The only thing I could... Alex, mommy's talking. Mommy, stop. Yes, let's keep it down a bit, right? So the only thing I craved while I was in Guangzhou was um, this hard body chicken. And I never really got it. And then, I wish you could see what he's doing. And, and then, afterwards when I came to Germany, I was like, okay, fine, let's see this thing. And there's mm. no hard boiled chicken. I would just have to eat German food for me, yeah. which was really, it had a yeah. weird taste. Yeah. There was no uh, spices, Robertson spices. There was no chakalaka. There was no aromat in the food. It was just salt and pepper. So somehow it was always boring for me, to be honest. And I always craved everything, but I would make sure that whenever I go to, back to South Africa, I would buy a lot of stuff which I needed. So I came back with the stuff to Germany. Fine, and as I got bigger, I never really wanted to go out. I never really took advantage of this little moment of being pregnant without having another child. Because if now I'm to get pregnant, I'll be having Alex, so I'll still have to take care of Alex. So I missed this big chance of dressing up and being girly about it. I just stayed in pyjama pants, stayed inside the house, I was not about walking. All I wanted to eat was jelly and custard. And you can't make me eat jelly and custard today. I've ate, eaten enough jelly and custard to last me 10 lifetimes. I was into that. And anyway, I always said, yeah, I'm not, I'm a strong African wife. But baby, you're entertaining him, you start singing now and I'm still talking. Alex and Daddy, can you please go down? I think girl can never have her own milk, can she? But I'm angry, Alex. Angry. I'm angry. You're still angry. I'm angry. Yeah, but that can't be a song. That can't be a new song. Bim bim bum. Haja. Bim bum. Bim bum bum bum. Bum bum. Nay, daddy. Star. So. So. With the whole uh, pregnancy, I mm. used to be that person who says, Yeah, I mean, I'm a strong African wife. My daddy when I go to the first bed, I'm just going to go to the first bed, push two or three times, and I'll have my baby. Mm. 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 Hey, see, ah, stop the filming, daddy. It's So since we got disturbed yesterday by Alex, we have to continue in his bedroom. I left him upstairs, he's watching Peppa Pig. So this is how Alex's bedroom looks. We have a wall of our pictures. Mm -hmm. And his little wall. And tree of owls, he likes owls. Yeah. And the blue bag there is Alex's school bag. He really wants to go to school and it's just not working. 
Yeah, and there's toys everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna fix this here and go back in the picture and then I'll record there. So we're gonna continue where I say pregnancy humbled me. Hello. Okay. with my whole craving things and eating and all that. So there came a day where I had to give birth. So somehow Alex's birth was as dramatic as he is. Um, my water broke on the 16th of December and Alex was born on the 18th of December. So somehow we were going, uh, Andres had an invite to go to some business dinner, not, not lunch, dinner. And on our way there, it was one of those things, I didn't want to dress up, I was tired, I was just, I just wanted the baby to come out of me. So, I remember that day I slept, woke up at 6 for the same thing, starts at 7, changed my clothes, yes, I just changed clothes because I bathed early in the morning. I changed my clothes, put on jeans, put on boots, it was really cold, like December is really really cold and it's snowing in Germany. Oh, yeah. Then I dressed up, I was looking nice, I was cute and all of these things. Then we went to the party. So we get to the parking, there's a parking lot. And then I'm like, I'm not really feeling well. It's like, what's wrong now? We're gonna have food, I loved food. We're gonna have food, you're gonna enjoy yourself, come, come. Then we go in, then we take some steps. And before we could reach the door, I tell Andres, I feel a bit wet. Wet? I don't know. Anyway, if you know anything about pregnancy, you'll know that uh, in pregnancy there's a lot of discharge that comes out. I just thought it's one of those. Then we signed in, they had like a little list with our names where you had to sign and get a plane tag and put on your shirt and just so everyone can know who you are so you can socialize better. So we go in. Before we could reach this second main entrance, I feel the same water again. It's like nine. This water is really warm. It's really like so bullish on my thighs. Then <laughs> we keep going and then people are like, oh, hi, Andreas. Of course, they want to greet him. They want to know who I am, of course. So and some of his colleagues already knew that Andreas is about to become a father and they knew about, they've met me before. Some didn't. So it's like, yeah, I want you to meet some people. I'm like, guy, this water thing, I feel it, it's too warm. It's not discharged. I told him, let's go to the toilet so I can check what it is. On our way to the toilet, everyone's like, hi, Andres, hi. I'm like, hey, Lamrena, I want to go to the toilet. We get to the toilet, and then something just told me, put your hand like this, like, make like a little scoop thingy. And I'm like, I see this is not pee. This is not discharge. This is like a little oceaniana hair with water in it. There was like hair somehow, a bit of hair. So, oh, my water broke. Yes, yes, I'm gonna be a mother. <laughs> I'm gonna be a mother and I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock the giving birth, right? I'm a strong African woman. That's what I am. I told myself, huh? And then I told Andres, no, my water broke. It's like, oh, okay, fine. Uh, um, what do we do? I said, no, let's go back home. We have my hospital yeah. bag packed already. We just have to take it and go to the hospital. So somehow, um, before you give birth in Germany, they do something like rounds before you can even go, um, I think when you're seven, eight months, you go to the hospital for hospital rounds. They'll show you where you're giving birth and where you're gonna go after, and they show you where to go in case your water breaks early, and then you know the way. So we went back home, we are busy talking, yeah, I'm a strong African woman, I'm gonna just go there like one, two, three, baby out. So we go back home. I told Andres, hey, nah, I, I need to shower, let me shower before we go to the hospital. I didn't have any contractions. So I showered, took a shower, I'm ready. When we come back home, we're gonna be having a baby. Hmm. Good dreams, right? And then I, we took the hospital back, got in the car and took me to the hospital. Before we could go to the ward, I had my first contraction. And that's not how I imagined contractions to be. So I was imagining fairies, ponies, unicorns, chocolates, right? And then, after that, we walked into the, 
into the section, it's called a Chrysal. We went to the Chrysal and then okay, so say what's your name and then like, yeah, we have your name on the list, but your due date was said to be eight, between 18th and 21st of December, but now it's 16th. Anyway, come in, sit there, the doctor's gonna come to check you. And every time I hear a lady say, like, you sure? Drama. She's just too dramatic, right? <laughs> I'm just and I laughing, but I know deep down I'm like, oh, what the hell? What did I get myself into? It's like, no, babe, calm down. I'm just like that. He's like, calm down, no need to stress, relax. Remember, it's not him who's gonna give birth, it's you and you alone. <laughs> so I sat down, the doctor came and she checked. She's like, yeah, you have dilated like three centimeters. I'm like, and how many centimeters should I wait for? It's like 10. I'm like, Okay, that shouldn't be an issue, right? I'm not having any contractions much. I only had one, so maybe the baby just comes anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. Then we go, uh, they said, okay, we can't stay where the people were giving birth. We have to go to the rooms. So they were already prepared a room where I'm gonna stay. Fine. So we go there. And there's two beds there. Uh, in Germany, you have two options. It's either you can take the room as a family room, with your husband after you have given birth so your husband can stay with you or you, it's normal you will. as i was saying in germany when you go to give birth uh, in the rooms you can either have the room as a family or have it and share it with another person but your the person you're with uh, has to pay like 50 euros a day to stay there and they'll get like food and everything so Things were just not going so well. And I ended up calling my mother and telling her that uh, nothing's happening and like it's just not progressing the way I thought it would. And then my mother was like, yeah, don't worry. I'm at church. Let me call Pastor Masinge. So Pastor Masinge comes and then how are you? Say, see me, Johnny. I'm good and yeah. And he says, okay, let's just pray. He prays. I tell you that man is really a man of God, that's all I can tell you. And he just tells me, oh, at any minute from now, you will start feeling eh, pains. And I'm thinking, oh, it's all bye. And I'm thinking, maybe he says this to everyone. Like, and then I felt like, okay, go to the bathroom, I had to pee. When I get to the bathroom, I'm peeing. Two seconds later, eh, I start having pains. And I'm like, oh my god, this is not it. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. It feels like they put, you know, like these things to shock you. I can't explain contractions to someone who has never had contractions the way I did. I can still feel the pain even today. And then I pulled this red toggle thing. It was in the toilet, like to call for help in, in uh, emergency and stuff. Then the nurse came and I told her I'm in pain. Then I said, okay, no problem, come to the crisis again when you're giving birth so we can check uh, how far you, you are and all of these things. When I get there, they check me and they say, okay, actually, you, now you are seven centimeters dilated, so, but you need to keep walking. Walk around uh, the area here and then at eight o'clock, come back. Now it was like 7.30 or seven o'clock, somewhere there. And then we're walking. And then I had this contraction again. These contractions were so horrible. It was not what I expected. I don't know what I expected, okay? I, if now I go to the hospital with a second child, I know what to expect. And maybe I would know, okay, now this is not the worst. But I had never had contractions in my whole life. It was rough. It was gruesome. It was horrible. I'm not going to lie and tell you, oh, I felt whole, it was perfect. Oh, no, I didn't feel perfect, I didn't feel pretty, I felt in pain. That's all I felt. So I went back to the, um, to the cry cell and then, okay, fine. I went back before 8 o'clock because I was not about walking. I was tired, I was having pain, and the contractions were just not giving me a break. When we went there, you had to ring your bell and the nurse came. And sad thing is... The nurses and doctors could not speak English. So I had to rely on Andres, uh, Andres uh, translation services, which I feel in labor, I don't need to hear his voice or, or anything. Anything can just piss me off. So I'm there and then the doctor comes in and the nurse comes in. So uh, when you give birth, you assign one doctor 
and two uh, midwives. And then the midwife from <laughs> during the day, like six, seven, uh, had finished her work, so there was a new midwife. And this was like, oh my God, it's so tiring. And she's gonna come, how are you? I'm just has to translate. Of course, I can't say what they said, then I couldn't speak German. And all of these things, how are you feeling? And yeah, yeah. Somehow she came in and they had to call another midwife who was on standby who spoke English and she was very young, which I really, really appreciated. She came. Oh, how are you? My name is Lisa. I remember her name. Her name was Lisa. My name is Lisa and then I'm your midwife for today. I'm going to be the one helping you. Okay, fine. Then they said, yeah, okay, ma'am, you have to push. Like, push? <laughs> how do we do that? It's like, no need to tell you anything. Your body will tell you. You have to try this pushing thing. And, okay, fine, but when we try the pushing thing, says, when we tell you that you have reached 10 centimeter dilation, you will have to start pushing. Now what centimeter am I? Nine. Okay, oh my God, this is not working the way I wanted it to work. I start being hysterical. You know when you cry, but tears don't come, but you're crying and you know for sure this is like, I'm crying and I'm really giving it my all, but tears don't come. I'm in pain. And I ask them, can I have an epidural, please? I'm not about this life. Okay, fine. And then they call the epidural doctor. And I said, but I did say I want the epidural all along. Didn't you call the doctor all along? She said, no, the doctor is still somewhere else. Give him 15 minutes. Ew. I'm like, 15? I'm in pain, my friend. I'm really in pain. And then the doctor comes. Doctor comes and then it was a, the first doctor was a, a female one. She's an, uh, I think it's called anesthesiologist or something, something like that. Mm. She came and then she tries, she pokes me once, doesn't go through, twice, doesn't go through, three. Hey, Namreina, three times already. Ah, And then they have to call a male one, who's like, I think the head of whatever they do. And then he finally came five minutes later and he also greets me. I'm like, I'm not in the business of being greeted. Just give me a picture roll, for heaven's sake. Then they, uh, the guy finally gets it. And then I have peace now. Now I'm calm and I'm like laying down. I'm talking here and I'm like, and then I'm just like, yeah, but babe, when the, when the doctors tell you and the nurses tell you to push, just, just cooperate for once. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm the most understanding and cooperating person. Don't you dare tell me I'm not cooperating. Hey, and the guy just zip, kept quiet. And then they come because, yeah, now you are 10 centimeters dilated. Madam, I switch off the, 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 the epidural blood pill. So to reduce it. <laughs> so we go back to contractions again. And they, like they say if they don't reduce the uh, epidural dosage to you, you don't fill your lady areas. So you won't be able to push. And when you won't be able to push or stop, you won't feel anything. You don't have control over that. Yeah, now we have contractions again. Push, 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 push. Nothing happens. And then, of course, Andres tells me this later that the doctor was saying, ah, she's not pushing. Of course, I couldn't hear it. He was saying it in German. And then I pushed, I pushed, I pushed, I pushed, finally. And then the baby came on the 18th of December, 1.40. Yeah, it was 1.40 early in the morning. And that's when I became a mother to my very sweet bundle of joy, which looked nothing like me. I just carried my husband within me nothing like the only thing you could see that maybe it's her baby was the nose yeah then the nose stuck by her hello hello babe i have biscuits on my face my next to my face yeah i am in labor I am nine centimeters dilated and I'm taking it as an African woman. So strong. What's funny? Nothing, nothing. Why are you jealous of my Africanness? Nothing, nothing. I'm so strong, you know, contractions. What are those? Me, I'm stronger than pain. Okay, the truth is I, I, I couldn't take it anymore and I opted for epidural. That's it. Are you happy now? I'm totally happy. Thank you. I opted for epidural. Hey, don't be fooled. Labor pains will make you want to jump from a seventh building. 
like jump out of the window soon we are waiting to meet alex so we'll meet him yippee and i'll be a mommy subscribed please subscribe if you'd like to leave me a comment go ahead and leave something thank you very